Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Shukwa. And uh, uh, good afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just for full disclosure, uh, because you would wonder why uh, Shukwa gave me such a generous uh, introduction. You know, uh, not only uh, did Shukwa succeed me as uh, Attorney General uh, in Lagos State, uh, I also suspect that he has, uh, you know, some political ambitions. He might uh, also want to succeed me as vice president here. So, I mean, I, I, so I think uh, we are. I love that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm pleased to participate in this um, special session on Nigeria, and I must again thank the Commonwealth Enterprise uh, and Investment Council for the very kind invitation to be here and to join you at this w webinar. Uh, there is never a good time uh, for a pandemic, uh, I, and, uh, but there can be a terribly wrong time. And that's how it seemed three months ago as uh, COVID-19 began to ravage. January 2020, oil prices approached uh, $70 a barrel for the first time since the crash of 2015-2016 when we saw oil prices uh, at about sub-$30 uh, a barrel. Just at the end of 2019, uh, growth for us was about 2.55%, modest, but uh, from where we were coming, uh, we were, it, it was quite exciting. And we're looking at an upward trajectory, and 3% was already well in sight. Our economic recovery and growth plan was beginning to make sense, and work was going on in major rail, road, uh, and bridge projects along the main uh, trade routes, uh, the, the main uh, national trade corridors. Again, you know, the uh, EPC arrangements on our liquefied natural gas uh, LNG train seven, uh, which we expect to unlock about 30% more LNG output had commenced. So, so it seemed that the sun was beginning to shine quite brightly after the years of recession and its immediate aftermath. Then came COVID-19, uh, possibly the worst economic crisis uh, the world has seen. But for us in Nigeria, uh, it was also not just the worst crisis we've seen, but at the, you know, it was also a perfect storm for all prices. Russia and uh, Saudi Arabia chose that very moment for a price war. And of course, all prices crashed uh, at some point uh, to below $12 a barrel. And then the inevitable lockdowns resulting in closure of businesses, a huge informal economy all but crashed, and government revenues fell to somewhere between 40 and 50%. But I must say that the silver linings were perhaps bolder, yeah, even in those dark clouds. The president decided that we could seize the opportunity to reset our economy in a... Um, a way that may have been impossible had there not been a worldwide uh, economic crash. I was asked to chair an interministerial team to develop our economic sustainability plan, a plan which we hope will, in the next uh, 12 months or so, avoid a deep and prolonged recession by supporting businesses and households, but perhaps more importantly, addressing long-term structural vulnerabilities. So taking into account the size of our economy and of course our fiscal limitations, at this time, you know, uh, for those familiar with the Nigerian economy, our fiscal buffers are, are, are quite small. Uh, so we put together a stimulus package of about 2.3 trillion Naira, which is just about 1.5% uh, of, our, of, of our national income. If other factors like the price of oil and the length of the COVID-19 pandemic do not worsen, these interventions could uh, ameliorate the situation with a mild recession 
and we, we expect that something in the order of about uh, minus 0.59% uh, might be our growth projections, especially as we go into 2021. We've taken the opportunity of this, uh, of the crisis to remove petrol subsidies, which uh, was an important albatross around our necks, and also to insist uh, that power distribution companies must engage with customers to ensure that any new tariffs are based only on improved power supply. So we're talking of service uh, reflective uh, tariffs. The Central Bank of Nigeria is also committing to moving to a unified exchange rate uh, in order to improve certainty in trade and, and investment. So in addition to using uh, fiscal and monetary measures to stimulate the economy, our main objectives are to retain and create jobs and to assist uh, vulnerable uh, people, to support businesses and undertake infrastructural investments. And I was happy to see from the, the research uh, that uh, jobs and um, uh, retaining jobs and creating more opportunities uh, tops uh, Nigerians' uh, priorities uh, when it comes to uh, uh, what, what they believe the COVID response should be like. Some key uh, interventions include um, Jobs for Food, uh, which is an agricultural program aimed at expanding the acreage under cultivation across the country to create, uh, we hope, hundreds of thousands of jobs. And we also intend to guarantee uptake by processors, aggregators, and also to some extent by government. We also have a Jobs Through Homes uh, program, which is a program to provide jobs and increase our national housing stock at the same time uh, by a massive uh, social housing program where we intend to engage young professionals and artisans in small, uh, who are involved at the moment, in small businesses, uh, in, in building, and also using local products such as cements, doors, uh, tiles, windows, uh, and paint. We also have a solar home systems program, which really is uh, where we intend to uh, engage private solar power companies who will be able to access cheap loans to provide modular solar powered units to about 5 million households, which will roughly translate to about 25 million uh, persons or 25 million people in rural or underserved areas. At the moment, we have a, you know, a, a deficit of almost uh, 40 million uh, homes without power. So we expect that uh, this will be a major uh, dent in, in that deficit. The skill required means that we'll be encouraging suppliers to establish production facilities in the country. We expect to, uh, we, we expect to be able to attract um, solar companies to establish manufacturing and assembly plants uh, in Nigeria. So supporting small businesses also is a priority. And I'm sure that the Honorable Minister of Trade, uh, Industry and Investment in his comments will probably take uh, some more time to, to talk about that. We're also looking at a future of jobs program in technology, taking into account the new normal and our creative and significant youth population and the need to prepare uh, our economy to become an outsourcing hub, providing services across the whole gamut of uh, possible technology engagements, including animation, software engineering, and data analysis. These are areas where we've invested considerably already, and we intend to do a bit more. And we hope uh, that, that, that this, uh, uh, that some of, our, uh, some of the efforts we're putting into the response will address uh, these areas even more pointedly. So to be sure, improving health outcomes is of course very much a part of the package. To meet the immediate challenge, we've dug deep to find uh, resources to respond to the pandemic. We built, of course, more isolation centers, more laboratories, incentivizing medical personnel, buying test kits, PPEs, as well as you know uh, several uh, other equipment, medical equipment. 
We've increased the number of modular laboratories that can handle COVID-19 samples from about five at the onset of the pandemic to about 39 today. Uh, the crisis has also revealed, you know, significantly the vulnerability of our health sector. So as part of the economic stabilization plan, uh, we're also looking at universal health coverage about improving uh, the work we're doing in universal health insurance uh, with a view to universal health uh, coverage by a combination of public finance and mandatory uh, health insurance. So while we're bullish on uh, local production, we remain committed to engaging our traditional and trading partners. Uh, this is in recognition of the potential contribution of trade, of course, to growth. The African continental free trade area is, of course, pertinent for us, uh, but uh, so certainly is also trade with our Commonwealth partners, including uh, the United Kingdom. This was evident uh, in Nigeria's participation in the UK Africa Investment Forum, which was held earlier this year. And it's particularly noteworthy that uh, intra-Commonwealth trade is projected to rise from an estimated $1 trillion this year to $2.75 trillion by 2030. And we certainly intend to be a major part of, the, of that growth. It's not news, of course, that uh, the pandemic has distorted international trade, especially the disruptions in global value chains, export bans, and protectionist policies, etc. But on our part, we remain committed to the multilateral trade system and will ensure that our economy, uh, as much as possible, is not subjected to unfair trade practices. Ultimately, we see Nigeria as Africa's gateway economy, as the continent's most populous uh, nation and its largest economy. We think that we can leverage uh, our population, geographical location, uh, which is right in the middle of the far-flung Commonwealth countries uh, in order to catalyze intra-Commonwealth trade. Our investments are fast-growing and uh, we're looking especially at investments in infrastructure, power, rail, roads. And uh, of course, we're looking at uh, all, uh, several other areas uh, where, especially technology, where we think that we can benefit uh, from the, uh, uh, we can benefit from other Commonwealth countries. Once again, I thank the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council for convening this uh, important discussion, especially now uh, when we certainly uh, see a, a greater need for uh, social economic engagements with our Commonwealth partners. And uh, we're set and ready to continue these engagements. And we look forward uh, to uh, not just uh, what uh, this particular session will bring, but all our future cooperation. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Excellency, thank you so much for sparing the time. I know how busy you are. And you know, as if you haven't got enough issues to deal with, you've um, been extremely uh, generous with your time and uh, filling us in on uh, on the detail. Uh, I'm glad you uh, spoke about power because uh, one of the main issues for many of our members in Nigeria is the uh, the breakdown of the communication of power, uh, which obviously 